Good morning and welcome to Capable of Many Things. My name is James and today we'll be discussing QCAD, QCAD the free two-dimensional CAD software. And we will be discussing how to use a lot of the basic shape tools within the QCAD uh, screen here. Again, this is just covering the bases. So let's get capable. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about our basic shape tools. Why are you in CAD if not to make basic shapes or if just not make the shape uh, make shapes in general? That's a fun little tongue twister. All right, let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and pull out this magnifier here. We're going to take a close look here. Oh, we have a number of tools available to us. Each of them have different settings. Uh, a lot of these tools have the same sort of basic logic behind the same Tool. Each tool has a specific subset of little functions, little uh, key settings that we can adjust based off of how each tool is uh, designed. So let's take a look at lines and get a better idea of what this looks like. All right, under lines here, this is lines, and we have a number of red dots with a line afterward. Uh, you see here, this is says this says line from angle. Uh, this says line from two points, horizontal line, vertical line. Let's go ahead and make each of these and see what these mean. Now you'll notice the red dot seems like an interesting visual feature. At least it seems like a strange choice. Why would you have a red dot? Red dot in uh, QCAD indicates a point where you'd have to click. So. In order to create that vertical line, you would have to define how long that vertical line is going to be, and then you are going to click on that point, a point within the screen, to create a vertical line of a given length. Let's see that. There we go. Now I've selected that. We're going to go ahead and remove this uh, tool here. Uh, we have a single point line, this vertical line tool. And now I have an option for length. What is my length going to be? I'm going to go ahead and set that to, oh, let's make it something visual here. Uh, not 50. We're going to go with 10 inches. And we have a reference point here. All right. So now you'll see a small white line appearing on my screen. I can click anywhere, and boom, we have a white line that is 10 inches long all right 10 inch long line super exciting uh, and it's being uh, referenced from the bottom or the start of the the reference uh, of the line if I wanted to I can select middle or end if I select middle that means I'm selecting off the middle of that line to place the line if I select end it means the opposing end from where the dot is on the tool so there you go bunch of vertical lines I'm, I'm not going to judge what you're designing but that's a bunch of vertical lines all right now from here i can hit escape and this will pull me out of my tool here and i've effectively pulled myself out of making that escape is almost like a historian as you use different tools you can escape and move back through the tools you've used successively in uh, in the course of your work but it, it is dangerous to just utilize um, escape for that simply because you may accidentally back into another tool that you've already used and start working with it and not realize it there's there's failures that can occur in that regard but uh, we're not going to worry about that in this case just I, I take that back you are going to worry about that make sure you're paying attention to what your tool is as you hit escape and your your active tool is going to be visible up in the top left hand side of the screen we're going to be spending a lot of time up here okay let's look at some of our other tools here the horizontal line again same logic we have that little red dot with a line going to the right i'm going to go ahead and keep this at 10 here i'm starting from the end and now i have a bunch of horizontal lines that I can do with as I please same thing I can do middle start end to select how I want that tool to act and where I want to reference from 
when placing that tool. I can also change the length. I'm going to hit escape again, or I can also hit the back button. Boom, there we go. Uh, righty. Line from angle. Okay, line from angle. Um, here we have two options. We have angle and length. Let's go ahead and get a, a better visual on that here. So we have angle here and length. I'm going to set my length to 10 and my angle to 45. Now it's set to 45 degrees. Now if I go on screen, I can set 1, 2, 3, for essentially as many as many lines as I want here. All of this is just a 45 degree angle line that, that I'm building within QCAD. There you go. Go back one more time and we're back at this tool. We're still in the tool. I can hit escape and now I'm out of the tool. But now I'm back on horizontal line so I hit escape again and I'm back to pointer. Okay. Uh, the only other line tool that we're going to discuss right now, we're talking about basic tools and interfaces we have the point to point that is the classic click and you have this little tail that's following you around and you click and you click and you click and you make yourself a little box and right click or escape closes uh, removes that tail and you're no longer utilizing that tool you can you can restart making lines boom done you can also right click and that gets you out of that tool again right click also backs you out of this menu so you want to move through the menus you can hit escape that takes you back out of tools you right click that'll get you back out of menus and those are lines really nice way to start off now let's say you don't want to do any of this you don't like any of what you've uh, put on the screen you can always click on an item so you take your mouse left click and select an item and hit the delete key and she's gone select an item delete key and she's gone you can also hold control I'm sorry QCAD must be shift hold shift select multiple items and hit delete you can also hold your left click button down your left mouse button down hold it now drag and it'll form a box that will delete whatever's in that box. We're going to do this a couple times. I've selected everything. I go to my keyboard, hit delete. All right, and I do the same thing here. All of these items, again, left click, hold, and drag the mouse while still holding that left click, and hit delete, and she's gone. And that's everything on the screen. Now, let's apply the same logic to our circle tool. I'm going to go ahead and let us zoom in on the circle tool we have circle options with that red dot red dot being in this case center and then a center and point so one point is going to be the center of the circle the other point is going to be a reference for the radius of the circle let's try that out Woo! here we go one click places the center of the circle I'm going to go ahead and move away and out and boom there we go let's, uh, a circle with a radius of 10. Let's try another tool. I'm going to right click, gets me out of that tool, goes back. We now have center diameter tools. I can select the center diameter tool and choose a diameter of 5. And move down. And now I have a circle with a diameter of 5 and I can place that as many times as I want. There you go center diameter all following the same logic here uh, it seems funny to me that they have uh, angle options on this particular tool but that's neither here nor there um, here we uh, we also have other ways to reference the shape similar to the lines we can choose how we want to reference the shape when placing it it makes it easier depending on your application um, to to set these in a given way um, more often than not when it comes to circles though I do tend to find middle to be the easiest because I'm usually using some other form of locator to help me find middle you can choose as you do uh, the best 
way and manner for you to use this tool. Last couple things, center by radius, and this is a radius of 5, a circle with a radius of 5, reference from the middle, select and done. And you have two points to create a circle, 1 and 2, so on and so forth. The logic of the system follows and stays the same. The red dots are going to be where you click, and the system will show you as you go what it'll look like. Well, let's go one, two, and three. Let's go three there. Yep. And uh, that's a three point circle, and so on. So that is a basic overview on shapes. We're going to do one last bit with uh, shape tools within um, QCAD, and that's going to be our square tools because we're going to use that uh, in upcoming work here. Hit uh, rectangle and rectangle of a given size. So just like before, we have a red dot and it looks like two red lines. So we're defining two red line, two items on that rectangle. And the other one is a rectangle from two points. All right. Uh, let's build a couple of rectangles here. Rectangle uh, width of 10, height of 5. And now we have a rectangle. Same logic on repeat. You can also change for uh, radius the corners. I'm going to zoom in here. You have a radius. You can select what kind of radius you have on your shapes. We'll show you what that looks like. We're going to select the radius on, and now we have radius rectangles. Now, let's say you just want to make a square out of out of nowhere. You have the option to just make a square out of nowhere. It's a two-point rectangle. Uh, back over here, though, I'm going to go to rectangle with size and show you one other option. You can also set the angle of the square you're working with, 45, here in the options for that tool. Use it. It's a uh, powerful little adjustment, uh, especially when it comes to slotting characters. And you'll see that when we get to working with text and making text cuttable for reductive uh, manufacturing methods. So there is uh, everything you need to know, at least to get started with basic shapes within QCAD. If you have any requests, we do have a, a link to request in the bio, so please check that out. And until next time, keep messing around, keep playing with the system, and keep learning, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.